45 days ago, I built this aquascape, added life, and then sealed it shut. Since then, we've seen new life, some fighting, and a lot of growth. Let's go back to day one. I found this huge jar in my garage and figured it'd be perfect for a video. So I decided to get all the things ready to build out the ecosystem. As I did with most of my builds, we started out by adding some aqua soil so the plants have a place to get their nutrients from. Then I capped it with sand. This is to hold the nutrients in the aqua soil and also it looks better than just having a black bottom in my opinion. I think I got more sand on the desk than in the actual jar though, so let's clean it up and add water. Now that the water's in, we're going to let it sit for a day because it's super cloudy, so let's seal it up until tomorrow. On day two, it's time to build the rest of our aquascape. Right here I have a Sirius stone, and I'm going to use a little bit of super glue and paper towel to glue some spider wood to the rock. I think that this gives it a nice feel and makes it look like the rock is growing some vines. For the first plant, I chose Christmas moss. This stuff looks great and shrimp love it, so I'm going to glue it to this driftwood and place it in the tank so they have something to graze on right away. There we go, I think that looks really nice. Now that the bottom layer of the scape is built, it's time to add them in. I think these rocks are pretty neat because they come to a point like mountains. Now we're going to add in our driftwood. As you can see, this stuff is pretty messy. I decided to drain the jar because it will make filming and scaping a lot easier. Since the sun was going down, I decided to bring the jar inside to my laundry room to finish the build. Don't worry, it will be back outside in a little bit. I glued the rest of the moss to this driftwood so the shrimp and snails have something to climb on. The next plant is the first of our superstars. It will filter out waste, grow fast, and oxygenate the jar when it is sealed. For one of the final touches, I decide to add in a few river stones. I think this will give the jar a nice gradient. Now it's time to fill the jar back up with water. Our final plant is a floating superstar that will keep this closed ecosystem super healthy. The final touch will be this leaf that will grow biofilm and introduce tannins to the water that shrimp absolutely love. This is a filter sponge from one of my older tanks and it's full of beneficial bacteria. This will jumpstart the jar and get it ready for life. Now it's time to seal the jar and check back in when it's ready for life. Two weeks later, the jar is full of tannins and the plant growth has been insane. So far this jar has only been powered by the sun and the plants are loving it. If you look closely, you can see biofilm on the driftwood and microfauna on the glass. Microfauna are live creatures that help break down waste and are a sign of a healthy ecosystem. You can also see lots of oxygen forming from the plants. This is a great sign as well. With all that being said, it's time to add in our inhibitants. To start off, we have a pest snail. These things don't need a partner to reproduce, so we'll only add in one so they don't take over. Now it's time to add in the stars of the show. We have a blue, an orange, and a cherry shrimp. Three different colors for three different personalities. After a quick drip acclimation, we're ready to add them into the tank. After pouring in the shrimp, the water level rose, so we have to remove some water so that the top can absorb changes in the gas level. This is important for a closed ecosystem. Speaking of, it's time to seal the jar for the next month. Right away, the blue and red shrimp start to graze on the leaf, and the orange shrimp hides in a cave, probably due to stress from moving tanks. There's been plenty of time for biofilm to grow all throughout the jar, and the shrimp are taking full advantage, eating nonstop. Let's check back in in a week after everyone has settled into their new home. On day 21, I had to move the jar into my room because it started to get cold outside and I didn't want the shrimp to freeze. 
As you can see, the plant growth has exploded and so has the snail population. The red and blue shrimp are always hanging out together, but sometimes they get in fights, as best friends do. The orange shrimp is more of a loner and likes to keep to herself when she can. The red shrimp is definitely the adventurous one of the group, always exploring the jar and looking for new biofilm to graze on. I think I figured out why the orange shrimp likes to keep to herself. When I was filming this part of the video, I noticed that she has tiny eggs that are barely visible on video. On day 30, the plants are still growing rapidly and the orange shrimp is becoming more timid as she closes in on giving birth. The snails being good friends are trying to keep things tidy for the new coming babies. But the blue shrimp seems to be the mischievous one. He perches above, plotting to get the eggs. When the time is right, he goes in for the kill. But in one move, the mama bear instincts take over, and he realizes he is no match. After that close call, the orange shrimp fans her eggs to give them some much needed oxygen. Across the tank, we see a shrimp molt, presumably from the blue shrimp who is trying to grow bigger so his next attack is successful. The others just see this as a free snack. Eventually a meeting is called, and they all agree there will be no more harassing the orange shrimp or her babies. The blue shrimp agrees and does some self-reflecting. On day 45, the babies are finally born, and you can see them all throughout the tank. They're super tiny, but immediately follow suit of the others, grazing through the moss. We can see here that they want to hang out with the big kids, but the big kids just want to be left alone. These guys are so tiny that my camera can barely focus on them. Here's a size comparison. The shrimp is right here. Do you see it? Me neither. The babies are a reddish orange hue, and maybe that explains why the blue shrimp was so jealous. The snails are kind of like nannies for the shrimp, cleaning up after them and watching out to make sure that they're safe. Overall, I'm super happy with how this ecosystem turned out. Everything we added thrives, and we even had new life. If you stayed until the end, thank you for watching. Please comment your thoughts or what you would like to see me build next. Have a great day.